Hey, welcome everybody. I hope the volume's okay. Um, yeah, it's good to be here again with On One Software, one of my favorite software companies. I think I've been using their software for I don't know, 12, 14 years, a long time. But I love I love um, <coughs> working with software, all the different kinds of plugins. Like uh, Brian said, I did write a book on Photoshop plugins because I just um, I love using plugins and I love anything to do with uh, putting stuff into Photoshop. A lot of people buy Photoshop and think, oh, I don't have to spend any more money. And I tell my students I'm really good at spending your money. And I like to show them all the best stuff that's out there. And On One has some really good stuff that I... That I um, like I was saying, I, was, I, I tell a lot of my uh, students that Photoshop is a photographer's best friend. So I grew up in the darkroom and I worked there uh, since I was about 13. And using some of these plugins for Photoshop, uh, it's, just, it's just head over so much better than even working in a darkroom. But I loved working in a darkroom because it gave me a really good feel about how to work on my images and make them even better. It's very much like what Ansel Adams did and so many other photographers did. But uh, <clears throat> like Brian said, I travel all around the world. I, uh, I teach stock photography. I shoot stock photography. I do a lot of travel photography. And I just did a, Burma, a workshop to Burma, Cambodia. And I was in Thailand also. So I was gone for five weeks. Um, but um, why don't I just show you what, what, I, what I do? Um, I was going to bring up my website here because I uh, it's just kind of an easy way to show some of the stuff I do. Take a second here for my screen to load. But I love travel photography, going to different countries. That's in India. In um, Burma, this is uh, from another trip to Burma. It's one of my better selling images. Uh, <clears throat> also Burma, really beautiful monastery right here. And I work with these people. I, I put the monks where I want them and uh, I don't just have to capture them. This is in Turkey. So I have to I have to set up a lot of stuff. That's my girlfriend. She's jumping in Costa Rica. I had to make her jump a bunch of times to get that shot. <clears throat> in France, so I suit all kinds of different things. These are Camargue horses in France. My girlfriend again. She's definitely one of my good models to use. I'm going to show her in the, in the webinar today. <clears throat> Africa did a uh, did a safari in Africa and one of the leaders. I do a lot of night photography. This is in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I do workshops and this is in Death Valley. I'm doing with Jennifer Wu, who's a Canon Explorer of Light, and we do a really killer workshop in Death Valley. This is more Death Valley. We, we know the good dunes to go to in Death Valley, so it's really nice. I just love shooting sand dunes. Oops, I forgot that was in Africa, and um, some of the cool stuff. And then I have my categories here on my website, so all different kinds of things from people to animals to, uh, um, you know, all different things. I have my workshops on here in uh, different countries I've been to. So uh, that's basically kind of what I do. I love, I mean, I have one workshop, I have one category here called stock photography. I can just go to that, and <clears throat> what my main focus is on is on stock photography and uh, I love shooting all, all different kinds of things, setting them up. I could do a workshop here in Joshua Tree, and I have to think of these ideas. I have a girl hitchhiking out in the desert, so I had to go and buy the luggage. I told her what to wear. I did a workshop, and I taught everybody how to shoot like this, slaughter the hat, um, and then do basic stuff like this, setting up little kids and doing things like that, or actually adding lightning to a scene like here in, in uh, downtown Los Angeles. Uh, so. Um, that's kind of fun, and I do all kinds of different uh, things. I love shooting kids, so setting up kids like this at UCLA, where I teach uh, a little girl with a laptop, just uh, is kind of a lot of fun. And just did this about uh, a few weeks ago with my girlfriend before we went to Burma. I had to <clears throat> put the camera on the bottom of my monopod, uh, on the top of my monopod, then turned the monopod upside down, put it by my feet. I used a remote shutter. <laughs> And, and I just kept shooting her with the camera upside down, barely scraping the ground and, and pre-focusing on her and, and, getting, um, and getting some movement there. So I had to think about shutter speed, how much blur did I want, making sure, you know, this is all trial and error and messing around. It's just kind of fun. So um, that's, that's basically uh, what I do. And then I have to do even stuff like this, to be really conceptual. And I can't put a camera in my mouth, so I have to think, how else can I do stuff like that? So anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's what I do. And, uh, let me know when we're ready to go into um, talking about focal point, Brian. Oh, you're you're good to go, Brian. Oh, yep. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Well, then why, why don't we get right into it? Um, like I said, I love I love using on one stuff, 
And, the only thing uh, Scott thing I'll do is I'll go into uh, <clears throat> yes Scott the the one thing is just uh, to the the lag there's just a little bit of a lag um, with GoTo meeting right now so if they could just uh, uh, take that into consideration. No problem. People are uh, people are loving that uh, that slideshow. Oh, cool! Excellent. That's just on my website, asa100.com. All right, I'm going to go into uh, I'm going to open up this this shot of the Camaro horses in France, and I like this image, um, but I wanted to try something different, and I love focal point. You could go in and you could try different kind of radial blurs or different kind of blurs in Photoshop. There's different ways to make selections and do things, but one of the reasons I love using plugins, and some people, they're such purists, they're like, oh, um, I don't use plugins. I do everything myself. And I just, hey, no problem. What, whatever you want, I never tell people what to do, what not to do. I just like to help guide them and I show them what, what, you know, what help has helped me and helped my friends. We have get together all the time. My friends come over and we have powwows. I love using plugins because they do things that I want and things that I'm not even sure I know how to do any other way in Photoshop, and they do them <coughs> fast and they do them amazingly well, and they give me so many options. So when Focal Point came out years and years ago, um, it just changed it just changed the name of the game for, for everything because what you could do is you could simulate using different lenses um, that you didn't have in the field at the time or whatever. And it's just fun. I love it. I love shooting an image. You go, you know what? I'm going to mess with that later in Focal Point. And so this is one of those images. What I'm going to do is uh, talk a couple things real quick. If you go into Photoshop, just for some of you that, that aren't, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for Photoshop right here. It, when you click on Photoshop on Get Info, <coughs> it'll say Open in 32-bit mode. Some of you um, don't have to worry about this. It's gonna open in 64-bit automatically. But if you're wondering like where did all my filters go, um, that's because you need to check on check Open in 32-bit mode because many filters do not open up in 64-bit yet. But uh, thank God all of on ones do. So you probably don't have to check this box right here. Photoshop's going to run much better, especially on one software is going to run much better. But then when you're in on one software, you're going to probably say like, okay, I'm all set, I installed it, and like, oh my god, where's my stuff? It's not in there. What uh, on one had to do because of so much, uh, these algorithms and all the complicated uh, math that they had to do, they had to put the uh, plugins over here in the automate menu. So this is where you'll find them. So many, <coughs> excuse me, many people might install the program um, and all the software and go, where is it? It's over here in automate. What they also did, which I really like, is they gave you your own little panel over here. It's the on one panel, and you can put it right up here, and you can install it just by going over here to, uh, I think, View, Extensions, and then hit On One. And it'll put it right over here. So you can just drag it over here and go to all your things really quickly so you don't even have to waste your time going over there. And <clears throat> this is another thing that... I'm going to talk about a little later. These are actions. I love using a lot of actions. And these, what, what these are, are quick ways to hit things. I could actually rotate an image really quickly if I want by one button rather than going and looking for things. The, the, the program I'm going to show in a little bit called Photo Tools is a whole bunch of amazing actions all built in one interface. Absolutely love the program. The more I use it, the more I'm amazed at how many great things there are. So <clears throat> if you like actions, you're going to really like Photo Tools. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this little kind of cool uh, panel right here, and I'm going to click on focal point. It's going to bring me into this beautiful interface that is just absolutely gorgeous. It's just stunning. And the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm not sure, it's probably remembering the last setting I had or something, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit reset all. And it's going to give me a brand new clean interface with a little focus bug in the middle here. So I'm not sure how many of you have focal point, how many of you would uh, might think about buying it, but um, if you use it before, you know how awesome it is. If you haven't used it, this is the main thing of focal point. You have a focus bug. It's a grid, and you can put it anywhere on your screen, and it will keep what's in these little crosshairs in focus, and it will blur out the background. And you can change the shape of that right here from round to planar, and I'll be showing planar in a little bit, but round will give me this round one, and what I, all I want to do with this is make this horse's face kind of the uh, focal point, and so if I take the feather slider over here, if I'm going too fast, let me know, you can see the hard edge it puts over here. What I want to do with this particular image is bring the feather slider all the way over, and I want it to blur out nicely 
from over here, and I'm going to put this over the horse's face, and then there's these little antenna right here. And I'm going to come up to this, and I'm going to resize my focus bug. Something like that, maybe. Okay, that, that works for me. And I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And it's really fun. You get addicted to this. And, and now I'm going to hit before and after by hitting Command-P on the Mac. You see, there it was, the image we had a second ago, and there it is now. I mean, that's amazing. And that, that blur is defined right over here in, in the, the amount of blur right over here. I can go blurrier. I can go less blurrier. And I can pick now with focal point two the kind of lens I want to simulate. This is absolutely amazing. Look at these different lenses here. And so you can actually pretend that you had an 85 millimeter 1.2 lens at 1.2, like you spent $2,000 on your particular lens when you're really only shooting with a camera on the cost you 250 I mean, it's just kind of funny. It won't be exactly the same, but it's very close, and I absolutely love it. I mean, look at this blur. This is very hard to simulate in Photoshop on your own, trying to use, forget Gaussian blur, trying to use lens blur or something like that. It's really difficult. But once again, look at the before and look at the after. It's just, it's just breathtaking. But the one thing about this particular image here that I'm noticing is that the... Um, the horse's face right here is um, it's still a little bit blurry right here. Uh, it's because of the feathering from this particular focus bug. So I'm going to grab my Wacom tablet, and I'm going to grab this incredible tool. They have a tool in here. They built in their, their most, many of their plugins. It's a brush. Now, I have to tell you, this little tool right here allows you to brush in and brush out your effects on many of their plugins. And I have to tell you, this is the de facto standard now for any plugin out. No one else has this that I know of. And I've asked other plugin manufacturers, like, you know, you guys got to wake up. On one's got it together here. You can brush in and brush out your effects. It's absolutely amazing to be able to brush in and brush out right on the screen. It's like a built-in layer mask. What I'm going to do is touch the brush, and I'm going to come down. It says paint in the focus. Here's my brush size, my feathering. I'm going to probably uh, just change the opacity to 100%. And I'm going to come in, use my uh, bracket keys, and I'm going to just paint in focus right on. Look at that. I'm painting back in focus right on the horse. And now it's completely sharp up here. The rest of it is blurred nicely. And now when I go to before and after, Look at the difference. That feathering that I had from the focus bug just feathered over here slightly and went from the blur and slightly blurred the face. Now that I painted back in the focus, at any time, I can come down here and see down here under the focus brush, and I can paint back in the focus. But I can paint in or I can paint out. So I can paint it back blurry if I want. But basically what I'm doing is painting in the focus. And look one more time. That's the before, and that's the after. That's a pretty nice image uh, after, and I, and I just I love this. I find images that I want to use the software for. So I'm going to cancel out of here, and I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go to one other one. Let's go back to Photoshop, and I'm going to use a little mini browser here, and let's go to another image. This is one I just shot on um, my Verma workshop. This was a lot of work to get all these monk boys together and get the key lights there. It was uh, unbelievable. I had to scout out the monastery in the day and look for a great room. And oh my God, <clears throat> hours later, got the shot. <clears throat> um, but it's exactly what I wanted to. I go there with a shot list. Whenever I travel, I have a shot list of ideas and things I want to do. And this is one of them. Um, shot this on my last day in Yangon, too, before I went to Cambodia. So um, what I want to do, I, I got up on a table and I shot down on them to get this angle, but I wanted to get a lot of depth of field. And so I put it at a kind of high aperture, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't blur this out, uh, you know, the last couple of rows of monks, unless I wanted to later with focal point. So I went for extreme depth of field, even though they're slightly blurred and they're more sharp in the front. Um, I kind of wish I had shot some other shots at f2.8, f4, just to see what happens, but I was, uh, it was, it was a lot of work, and the tea lights were burning out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I shot it high, and I decided later I'm going to mess with it in focal point. So let me show you what you can do in focal point. I want to blur out the last two rows of monks. So I'm going to come in here and go to my uh, on one panel again and double-click on focal point. This time we're going to use focal point in a different way. Okay. I'm going to come up here again and go reset. Uh, 
Okay, and then we have the uh, the round focus bug. What I want to do is come up over here and use planar. This is one that Brian and I use a lot, and it brings up a a uh, grid that's not round anymore. Okay, it's a planar grid like this, and what I want to do is I want to position it in a way wherever this is, this is going to be sharp. And many times as I'm working on this, I'm positioning it in a way. So what I wanted to show is that um, I have this mask function, and this helps me tell exactly what's in focus with the black, where my feathering is in the middle tones right here, and then white is what's going to be, uh, I'm sorry, this is what's um, going to be sharp, and the white is what's going to be blurred out over here. So all of the black is sharp. All these middle tones are the in-between area. And if I click back out of hide mask, you can see how it's starting to blur the area up there. Um, I'm going to have to put this down here. and Let me know if it's loud enough, Brian, OK? So that I can work with two hands here. I'm going to move my um, focus bug up. I'm going to pull it down a little bit so that it covers this whole area. I constantly go back and forth to my mask. And I can see, look, that's starting to blur a little bit. I really don't want that. So I'm going to maybe pull this down a little bit. And I'm going to actually watch the transition. And this is looking good. Believe it or not, I can kind of tell that this transition is looking good. I'm going to look at, and I can see that's what it's doing. It's blurring out just the background monks. It's slightly blurring these monks and slightly blurring this monk over here. Um, so what I want to do is you know, just maybe play with the amount of blur right here and decide how much I really want to blur. If I wanted to, I can pull the amount slider over here and really blur them out. I don't want to really blur them out. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. I want to make it look realistic. Like, I really got some nice depth of field there. Now, I like the blur that's going on. Maybe it's just a touch less. I'm going to pull it over there. Get a little sharper back here. Everything is looking good <clears throat> except for there's a little bit too much blur on these monks right here. So I'm going to go to my favorite tool, which is the brush tool. <clears throat> I'm going to blur, I'm going to probably paint in the opacity probably right around, you know, 90% or so. And I'm going to come in here and slowly just paint over their faces. And look what I'm doing. I'm bringing back the blur right around here. I'm going to come over to this one. And I'm going to do the same thing to this monk. And careful not to go in the back row over there. I can always paint back in the blur back there. I'm not going to do it right now. And I'm going to go on this monk right here. So he's a little more sharp, maybe not 100% sharp. And I'm going to go on his face because he looks like he could maybe be a little sharper. And this monk over here, I'm going to maybe change the opacity down a little bit. And then I'm going to do his face too because he's kind of in between. You still there, Brian? OK, good. And now this is starting to look good. And how does that look? I'm going to hit Command-T before. And there's the after. Look how easily I blurred out that back two rows without actually being in Photoshop. I'm in a Photoshop plugin. I may want to do it again. That's, this, is, um, this is before. And this is after. I, I'm just, I, I just have to tell you, I'm absolutely um, amazed at how easy this plugin is to use. It just, it just, and how good it is. I mean, this is something, if you're a photographer and you want to work with depth of field and you want to wish you had used a different lens, once you, once you learn this program and you learn how the tools work and you master this brush down here and you understand the mask function over here and you figure this thing out, look, here's the mask. I masked out the monk's head right here. It's just fantastic. This program is, is a lifesaver. I'm going to open up one other image here um, and uh, show you how cool this is. This will be the last one that I open up in focal point. Um, I want to bring in uh, an image a different way. This is the top of the Notre Dame Cathedral. I want to I want to bring an image in with a mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my quick selection tool and I'm going to just drag it along here. And it's a great tool for doing quick selections. And I'm going to come in here and I can, at any time, I can just let go, and then it, it's got a plus in there. I can build in and add even more on here. So this is basically my mask right here. And at any time, I can just click and add, and it's really nice because it's good to know this tool for focal point because you're going to want to use this rather than you know just building a, a – if you want to do something quickly, I, re, I really like the quick selection tool. Okay, so I've got him. He, believe me, he's not perfect. 
um, see if there's any other errors. What I want to do is deselect this area. I don't want to bring that in. So I'm going to hold down the Option key and just drag in there. Now, how quickly did I just make a selection of that gargoyle? I'll probably come up here <clears throat> and I will uh, feather it maybe one pixel. And now I'm all set to go into focal point. So I'm going to come back to the panel and I'm going to click on focal point. Now it's going to bring it in and it's going to think this is what you want to blur. So sometimes this will get extremely blurry. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit invert selection. And now it's going to work on the background. And I can take my planar tool again and I can start saying, you know what I want to do? I really want to make it look like I used a, a, a less shallow depth of field. I really want to blur out the background here. And I can start playing with this particular um, planar bug and put it in a way I actually, what's great about fo uh, focal point is you can make presets. I think I have a preset here that I did. Let me see if I have one here. Um, Gargoyle. I'm going to click on that. <clears throat> and it should have given me exactly the planar that I wanted. And let's look at the um, mask. And you can see there's the mask. This is in focus. This is a nice transition over here. And this is, this is, I'm sorry, this, <laughs> I always get it backwards. This is, um, yeah, this is right. This is sharp, and this is going a nice transition to blurriness back here. So if I click back on the mask, you can see if I go before and I go after, look what I did. The gargoyle is still sharp because I brought him in as a selection, which means he is going to be not touched. He is black. He is going to be sharp. This is all going to be sharp, but there's this nice transition. Well, this was never sharp to begin with, but it was less blurry, and it's going to more blur. So you can see sharp as can be with the particular lens I was using, and then going to more blur with this transition, and then the blurriest, depending on how blurred I want to get. If I want to blur out the background even more, <clears throat> I can come over to my lens presets and choose another preset over here, or I can just bump up the amount slider right here and watch what will happen it will start to blur out the background even more. And you can see it will really blur out the background. And depending on how much you want to do, you can see. So here's before, and there's the after. I think it's pretty powerful. I love this. And in combination with using selections, if you need to, um, imagine you have uh, you know, a, a baseball player and you want to highlight him. You have a football player jumping into the end zone and you want to blur out the crowd. Whatever you want, you bring in a selection and you can do that. It's just fantastic. And I use selections all the time when I'm using this software. So that's focal point. It's got a ton of options here. Um, you know, I've got other images I could show right now, but I kind of want to get into photo tools. But it's it's great software. Do we have any questions about it, or Brian, or are we doing okay? No, you're doing you're solid. Cool. Um, well, let's get right into um, photo tools, okay? So that was a kind of a little demo on. Focal Point, one of my favorite pieces of software. I wrote about it in my book. Absolutely love it. So let's get into uh, um, go over here to Photo Tools. By the way, Mini Bridge is really cool. It's a, it's a little bridge. Um, I'm going to open up this girl. I love shooting pregnant women. And uh, I have to be creative sometimes. So uh, <laughs> we drove to 7-Eleven, got Mr. Bubble. Um, and uh, we came back and threw it in. And that's what we came up with. Um, what I want to do with this image is I like it, but when I send my images to my stock agencies, they, they are really, um, they want perfection. And so even this image looks, even though it looks pretty good, I need to make sure the color cast is right. I need to make sure that it pops. So one of my favorite pieces of software for doing all kinds of things is Photo Tools. It's just a given that I'm going to think about doing something with Photo Tools when I'm working on most of my images. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to bring it in and see what can I do. And sometimes I don't even know what I want to do until I get into the plugin. I'm going to bring in Photo Tools and uh, make the interface big. Another gorgeous interface. So basically, you have these categories down here with different actions filled. Every time you click on one landscape enhance, you have a million actions. Can everybody see that? If you can, raise your hand. Box, you can type in things if you want to go to a particular effect that you want. Um, it's the same thing as you, if you look for. Um, Keywords, you'll see these different keywords, and I can type, you know, hit on portrait, and it'll show me all the different things that have to deal with 
with a portrait or whatever. It's amazing. I mean, you think of something you want to do, or if you can't think, it will give you suggestions here. Um, one thing I love is none. It gives me a full screen right here. So I use none all the time when I'm in the middle of working on an effect, and we're going to be doing that today. And I'll go back to presets. Um, this is um, one that I don't use because these same presets are over here, already in your menu over here, kind of redundant. So this one I never touch. I'm usually in categories, and I go look for stuff. So on this particular, I mean, this is great. You can do an effect, and you can come up here, and you can, uh, you can save your preset, and you can give it a name, and you can put it in any category. You can make new categories. I love the way they, do, they handle presets in uh, Photo Tools. It's great. But, you know, there's many, many different things you can do here. Um, and if you're looking here, you see these little flags. Flags mean things that you use a lot, and they become your favorites. And if I like to use clarity, all I have to do is come down here and click, and it becomes a flag. And that flag comes right over here in my favorites. So anytime I want to hit something, I can just go boost color, and all of a sudden, boost color is right there. So this is really nice to have a favorites menu that's right here. This was absolutely brilliant. So um, I love doing that. So just remember, all you have to do is click on or click off. It'll become a favorite. But let's get into something right now. With this particular image, what, what, what I want to do, I mean, I just absolutely love this. You have different options, too, if, if you have an effect here. Over here, you'll see the effect that we'll do, and you can hit split screen, you can hit before, and you can hit after. Now, this is not the same image because it can't calculate what it's doing that fast. So they give you these preset images. But you can have it on split screen. You know, say you go to boost color. It'll show you the difference. Or, um, you know, whatever one you want, it'll give you a before. A split screen, it will give you a before, and it will give you an after. So you can have this however you want. Um, I, I just usually leave it on after. <clears throat> so what I want to do for this image is I think the, the first thing that I want to do is go into Image Optimize, which I use a lot. And I'm going to go to this one thing here that I know um, Dan at Onma likes a lot. It's your, your dose of multivitamins. I'm just going to either double-click here or hit Add to Stack. And all of a sudden, in a second, you can kind of see before and after. Before and after. It's subtle, but it's nice. It cuts out some of the haze. And this is something, if I go full screen, you'll see what it can do here um, a little bit more. Uh, before and after. It's slight, like I said, but sometimes it's all that you needed. And um, it's just, um, it's a... Uh, it's a really nice one to use on many images. I'm going to be using it, I think, more today. And then you can alter the opacity right here from a little bit to a lot. This is just like a, a layer in Photoshop, so 0% all the way up to 100%. And it's showing me there it is right there. If I don't want it, all I have to do is hit the minus key over here. But the next thing I want to do, I want to make it pop a little bit more. <clears throat> My agencies, Corvus and, and Getty, they're very, um, what's the word? I don't want to say anything negative. They, they, they really want precise beautiful images that pop. And they're going to be in magazines. They're already going to lose some of their tonal value in the images in, in the magazine. So the images have to be really, really nice. So I'm going to come to uh, one of the other things that I use all the time, auto tone and color. You can see I put it over here in my favorites. So I'm going to come over to auto tone and color, and it gives you these options. Many of these actions um, give you options. I'm going to probably put this particular one onto um, auto contrast with neutrals because I think that's the one that's going to work the best with this image and I'm just going to hit add stack and all of a sudden look it popped a little bit more I can fade it back and I can anywhere along the way I can stop I'm going to leave it all the way there now if I hit the preview checkbox down here I can see the overall effect that both of these particular actions did so here's before and here's after now, maybe when I opened that image, you guys thought, oh, that looks great. What else can he do? Um, I know I thought it looked pretty good, but then the minute I used Photo Tools, it popped even more. Maybe I'll, I'll bump this back a little bit, um, and that's it. So I'll go full screen, and I'll do a before and after. Before and after. I just think it's cool. One more time. Before. It looks good, but it's a little bit dull. And then after, oh, of course, you can go and play with curves and levels and so many other things in Photoshop. But there are so many valuable things that you can do here in uh, Photo Tools. I'm going um, to open up another image here. <clears throat> this is one thing that really bothers me is, um, is uh, oops, did I not close that last one? Let me close that one. Um, is color correcting in uh, 
Photoshop. It's a pain in the ass. I shoot uh, outdoors. I shoot uh, daylight white balance most of the time from sunrise to sunset. It gives me the most accurate colors, really makes the sun the right color and pop and everything. But many times, especially with my Canon 5D Mark II uh, and on other Canons, and I know it's happened on my students with their Nikons, many of the images go slightly red, slightly magenta. And you can work all you want in, in uh, temperature, but sometimes in camera raw, but sometimes it just doesn't cut it. So I really like photo tools coming to the rescue. And I'm going to show you how easy that is to get rid of these color casts. You can also use PhotoTune, uh, which is a great plug-in also by on one. But I really like dealing with photo tools for so many things. So the first thing I'm going to do with, with, um, um, with little Natalie is I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to get out of here and get into my categories. I'm going to hit the one that I just showed you. I'm going to go back to Image Optimize. I'm going to go to Auto, Tone, and Color. And I'm probably going to hit just Auto Color this time. You know, you play with them and you find out which ones work the best. And if you want to know what they do, you can read right here. This automatically adjusts the black and white points of the image. And you can read what they do, and it really helps you understand. And also, you can see who designed it. Jack Davis, one of my favorite guys in the world in Photoshop came up with this for on one. And what I'm going to do now is hit add to stack and watch what happens. Boom. It made it a little bit too greenish blue. I'm going to dial it back to probably about, oh, I don't know, about 50%. And now watch the before and after. Before and after. Look at her hair pop. Look at her eyes. Her lips pop. But most importantly, the skin color gets rid of that overall cast. Even the blue of the background before pops more. Now, this is amazing. I'm just telling you, uh, for no other reason, <laughs> just use this on some of your images and watch what happens. But make sure that you dial back your opacity over here. The next thing I'm going to do, I don't have to do it. I'm just going to see how it looks. So I'm going to go back, put in some vitamins, and it made it pop even more. I'm going to dial back the vitamins just a little bit over here, multivitamins, and then I can click them on and off and see the difference. And you know what? It makes it pop even more. So right now, overall, before and after, it's looking a lot better. I'm going to try one more thing. Now, a lot of people are into sharpening images. One thing I hate, and I tell my students, probably the most overused thing in Photoshop is over-sharpening your images. It's, it's the sharpening tools. So you have to be really careful. But as long as you know that um, and you're careful, um, you know, sharpening can help your images. I'm going to... Um, one of the things that a lot of people like to do and I like to do is use high pass sharpening. I think my high pass sharpening is in here somewhere. Here it is. I'm going to hit progressive high pass. I'm going to double, I'm going to add it to the stack. Now it just sharpened the heck out of it. What I'm going to probably do is go down to maybe, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 percent and watch the difference. I'm going to go full screen and you can watch the difference that this does from here's where we were to here. Can you see that? All the way off, all the way here. Now I don't want it. I don't want it all the way here. It's making the hair crunchy and making her freckles pop too much. But if you work on a little sliding scale here, maybe about 30%. And now I'm going to do a preview before and after. This is before, and this is after. That's a hell of a before and after. A little bit of sharpening there made everything jump out a little bit more, and the rest of the auto toning and the vitamins. So one more time. Here's the image. It came out of my camera, tweaked it in camera raw, just still couldn't get the tone exactly where I wanted. And look what I did with, with photo tools. I don't know about you guys, but I am amazed at this. And this is uh, the image. It'll probably end up in a magazine um, and with the help of photo tools. I cannot tell you how many images of mine end up everywhere. From, I mean, I'll, I'll, be on the, I'll be on the airline and I'll open up the in flight magazine. I'll see my images there and I'll know the plugins that I used for those for those images, you know, my friends have been driving along. And we see billboards, um, and oh yeah, I remember where I was and, and what software I used. So it's cool. So this is this is really important. Uh, this one particular thing I'm I'm showing you right now. Um, so color casts are fantastic with photo tools. Um, I'm going to open up another image here. Oops, forgot to close up Natalie. I want to show you another image right here. Um, this was about a month ago, three weeks ago. I can't remember on the beach. Only three weeks ago on Thailand on the beach, my girlfriend and uh, had her kind of pose for me and wearing a sarong. I'm going to bring this into photo tools because I have some ideas what I want to do to this particular image. So let's go for something a little more artsy. So I'm going to double click photo tools. 
And on this particular image, um, I just want to play. So I think the first thing I want to do is play with one of my presets that I absolutely love. And there are so many things here. I mean, you have one touch actions over here. And then if you come over here, you have ones that if you hit, like I can double click on this and it will bring up, it will do like maybe five different actions at once. So these are multi-actions going on over here. And there, boom, all of a sudden, something like that. And if you look over here, um, these are all the different actions. You can turn them on and off one by one and see what it's doing. But I don't want that. I'm going to hit reset. So you can play with tons of things that are over here. Old time photo, I'll double click and see what it comes up with. It's taking a lot of time because it's doing so many actions. And there. I have no idea what you know what it was going to look like. I'm going to hit reset. I don't want that. And um, you know you can cruise here. These are from the NAPP. Let's hit 1974 and see what it comes up with. It's probably going to make it kind of look dated. And yeah, well, okay, not what I wanted. I'm going to hit reset. So these are just multi-action ones here. They take a long time, and you can turn on and off the uh, actual actions over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of my favorite. Uh, categories here, stylized effects, and I'm going to go down to this one that was kind of modeled after the movie 300 a little bit, called Blue Dawn, Blue Dawn Leonides, Leonides, and it's designed by Kevin Kubota. He's amazing in Photoshop. Love the guy. Um, he designed this. I'm going to hit Add to Stack. I absolutely love this preset. I use it a lot. I'm going to hit Add to Stack, <clears throat> and watch what it does. Um, it comes out at about 75%. I'm going to go down maybe a little bit, but watch. Before, I know there's a lag here. And I'm going to come up at 100%. Look what it's doing. It's taking out the color. And it's giving that look, like in the movie 300 a little bit, that, that kind of rich greenish sepia tone with muted colors. And I think this is cool. But on this particular image, I would probably go down somewhere maybe between 50 and 70%. And then I want you to see here is 60. Now watch. I'm going to go full screen. And I watch the difference before and after. Look at the colors back here get muted. Look at her sarong get muted, her face before and after. I, I just think right off the bat, nothing else I have to do. I think this is just awesome. So I use Blue Dawn Leonides on so many images, and I tweak the opacity. And I will probably send this in to my agency. Well, I don't know if I'll send it in like this or I'll send it in like this. I really don't know. Um, all I know is uh, on my website, I will probably put it on like this because I really like this stylized effects and at this effect and if you go over to um, stylized effects you can see there's tons of different stylized effects and they even have a category for three for uh, HDR and they put it doesn't really do HDR but it helps some of your HDR images with these stylized effects they've got a film and darkroom category here bleach bypass I mean they got some great stuff here but let's say okay I want to go one step further I really like converting to black and white and if you come up here in the menu here, they have got some great black and white treatments over here, which I really like. One of my favorites is another one by Kevin Kubota. It's called Kev's Secret Formula A1. So it's absolutely top secret. If anyone finds out about it, he actually will send you a letter to cease and desist. I'm just kidding. He, it's just his little secret formula that I love, and I'm going to hit it right now, and it'll probably come out at 100% black and white. And there it is. That's like nifty little black and white. There's a little bit of glow going on, a little bit of green. Look at the background there. I'm going to hit before and after. And one more time. Before, a lot of color, really cool. And then after. So this is now a combination of Blue Dawn and Kev's Secret Formula. I really like this. <clears throat> I can go one step further even. You know, it's just fun. You take your images and you just play, play, play. And that's what's fun. Get off of Facebook, okay? Play in photo tools. It's about a thousand times more useful, and it's just going to make you some money and uh, make your friends go, how did you do that? Okay, so um, I'm going to fade back here, and look at that. Now I have a combination of Blue Dawn Leonides. I have Kev's Secret Formula, but it's hand-tinted because I have changed the fade right here. I do this in Photoshop all the time, but you can do this right here in the plugin, and right about... Maybe right about there, right about 50%. Now let's look what's going on. Full color, muted color. Now this is what I call stylized. This is what magazines like. This is what your friends are going to go, oh, uh, how would you do that? Can you show me? This is really, um, this is nifty stuff. I 
I really, I really like this. But what if you like this part right here? Actually, let's go back to black and white. What if you like the way this looks, but you're like going, you know, I see on TV and they bring back the color just on a certain part. It looks so cool. Well, let's do that. I'm going to put the phone down. I'm going to grab my favorite tool that's built in the photo tool also, the brush tool. And I'm going to go down to my brushes. And I'm going to probably choose opacity 100%. Uh, feathering, probably I want not too much feathering. My brush size, kind of small. I'll show you why. I'm going to hit none, full screen. I'm going to push down the space bar. And I'm going to hold down Command Plus. And now I'm just like in Photoshop. It uses the same Photoshop commands, which is amazing. And what I'm going to start to do now is paint right in here. And I'm actually going over, which I shouldn't. Believe me, I'd be spending more time uh, actually I was doing this for real. And I'm just probably go around the outside here. You know what I should do? I should turn up the feathering actually a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to come over here. Whoop, see what I did? I, I can paint that out in a minute. Actually, I'll, I'll do it in a minute. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go across like this. Kind of, I'm doing a really quick and dirty job, guys. I'm working fast. See, I get on the bracelet there. And then what I can do is make a bigger brush and then just paint the whole thing inside here. And it should be painting at 100% opacity. I can double check that by going over one more time and making sure. And, um, you know, if I did any overspill, like, oops, let's see, like that, I come over here. And I can go paint in, and it'll just like a layer mask in Photoshop. The most important thing you can ever learn in Photoshop are layer masks. And this has a built-in layer mask. It's unbelievable. Oh, I did a little bit of the bracelet that I bought in the girl. So why don't we just make a small brush and let's bring in the whole bracelet. And now, let's look at it full screen. That's kind of cool, too. So before. And after, one more time, before, full color, and then after with this little stylized effect that we just did.